This is the new K3 Innov dual Whoa. motorcycle dash Whoa. cam system. It's fully HD, 1080 resolution front and rear, comes with Wi-Fi, remote, external mic, has full GPS overlay, an intelligent power supply to monitor the health of your bike's battery, and even a parking mode to make sure your bike is fully protected even when you're not there. But is it any good? Down in the hood. As usual within of the K3 comes stylishly boxed, and inside you get everything you need for installation. The cameras are a sturdy and stylish machined aluminium construction, both use the Sony Exmor CMOS sensor and have a 120 degree field of view. The whole system is waterproof to IP67. The K3 system supports up to a 256GB SD card, which will give you 19 hours of constant recording before it has to loop. Like the K5, the new K3 has a dash remote which lets you see at a glance that the whole system is working properly. You can also manually lock files, take pictures, or reformat the system from the remote. So what does the Innov K3 actually look like on the bike? Well, I have it mounted to my Tractor 1250 GS. Front and rear cameras are exactly the same size. They're both 1080, slightly upgraded from the K2 cameras. Nice and easy to mount. Um, I hadn't planned on doing an installation vid for the K3 because it's almost identical to the K2 stroke K5. So if you've watched those installation vids, you'll be able to install this. No problem whatsoever. That remote is so handy. You can see there that the, um, the lights, when the lights are solid like that, that means you've got everything's working fine. Let's get out on the road. So I think what we'll do first, it's not a bad day today, it's quite bright. We'll head out and we'll do a quick blast on the motorway so you can see what the audio and the picture's like at motorway speeds. He said coming straight out into traffic. So we'll just push up to motorway speeds, which we're at now. Lots of speed cameras on this bit. So anyway, so that's us at motorway speeds. Now this is the sound from the GoPro. What do you think of that? Round the ragged rock, the ragged rascal ran. And this is the sound at the same speed from the Enob K3. Round the ragged rock, the ragged rascal ran. How are they sounding? Both mics are pretty much identical distances from my uh, face. How does that sound? Anyway, what do you think of this? It's about a two second gap between me and the white car in front there. In fact, if I come in, what are you thinking on the picture? So you have the GoPro, Hero 9, 1080, 30, high bit rate. And then you have the NL K3. Again, 1080, it's at 30 frames per second, and it's set at very high bit rate, the highest bit rate K3, the highest bit rate that is available on the K3. So what are we thinking, comparison between the two? The GoPro obviously has an image stabilization, Hyper smooth, it's got automatic self leveling. Leveling. The K3 doesn't, the K3 is just the camera. So we'll come off here and we'll get on and do a little bit of A road. Whoa! Oh wow, there's a load of fuel on there, load of diesel. Jeez, do you see the bike go? Whoa! 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 <laughs> Gee whiz, that was lucky. I smelt it, and just as I smelt it, the bike slid. Any sort of seasoned bikers out there will know that. If you smell fuel, geez, keep that bike upright. Just trying to look for the path of it at the moment. Is that the old bill? There's old bill there. I'm going to go back and tell them. Somebody will come off on that. A bike will definitely come off. So there's a bit more tree lines. See how this copes with the different light levels. A bit bumpier as well. So that's us now up at around the 40 mile an hour mark. How does that look? So folks, you can see as we come through this sort of tree lined area and there's all those fluctuating light values, you can see there's a fair bit of um, noise, of, of graininess starts appearing into the, the camera footage. The GoPro Cope's not bad with this. The Innov definitely is struggling a little bit there. 
more so with the front than it is with the rear. I think that's probably because we're facing into the direct light from the sun with the front camera. But overall, for dash cam style purposes, it's not bad at all. Now you can see, if you look down sort of the bottom left, you'll be able to see that there is the date time overlay, your speed overlay, your GPS coordinate overlay you can switch all that off you can show whatever you like it's all in the app you dictate what it shows do you see what i see nationals and nobody's speeding up okay can we get in front before that's solid i think we can oh about two feet over it i do apologize to all you rats out there national speeds on the a roads tree lined on one side how is that with the different light values at this speed what's the vibration like what are you thinking what is it everyone come on nationals what is all this about oh no does that mean i'm gonna get dubs on the camera that's one thing with these dash cams because the lens is a static this helmet camera here it moves as I move my head it's moving isn't it so all of the oncoming wind that you get as you're riding through the air well as I move my head that's constantly changing the angle that that wind hits the lens so it does help in a way to keep that lens fairly clear most of the time most of the time the Inovs because they're fully fixed the static on the bike the wind only ever hits them in one plane. It's constantly in that same direction. What you tend to find is that the lanes, certainly the front lanes, gets mucky, dirty quite quickly. So what I find is every time I get off the bike is I will just give that lens a bit of a wipe, give it a bit of a clean. Right, so let's have a look at what the actual remote does, shall we? We have the remote here. As you can see, you push the button once, and you see it's now blinking, that intermittent blinking. So you do that if, for example, something's happened that you want to, um, you think is noteworthy, you want to record that, you want to protect it. You just push that button once, the big silver button on the remote. Now I'll wait till we get to some lights because I think by the letter of the law, you shouldn't operate that remote whilst you're riding. I think. So rather than have some ne'er-do-well watching this going, oh, you, you, we're using a hands, a non-hands-free device. And sticking me on, report me to the old bill. Heaven forbid someone would do something like that. Hey, people, once bitten, twice shy and all that. So I'll wait till I get to some traffic lights and then I'll show you the next part. So the next one, if you push the button, tw oh, there we go, we're moving now. I'm going to get all green lights now, aren't I? You know that's the way it's going to be. Yep, there we go. <laughs> so, right, so if I push twice on there, so I've just pushed twice, that should have saved a picture, hopefully. The other thing that you can do via the remote is do a factory reset of the entire system. So if you push and hold the big silver button uh, for 10 seconds, you will do a full factory reset of the DVR module. What that doesn't do, and I have checked this myself, it does not wipe the SD card. So I was just thinking, you know, let's just say for whatever reason, you're out on your bike. I need to delete the files that are on my SD card for whatever reason that may possibly be. <clears throat> Not that you're trying to hide anything, obviously. Pushing and holding that button at the moment does not wipe your SD card, okay? So keep that in mind. I have mentioned to Inov that that may well be a pretty handy function to have. I can't stress enough the peace of mind I get from knowing everything that's happening whilst I'm out on my bike is covered 24-7 when I have one of these systems fitted. When you enable the parking mode, your bike is constantly, constantly protected under CCTV. The negative of that 
obviously is that your bike is constantly protected by CCTV. Everything you do, it's got your GPS coordinates on it, it's got your speed, the time, the date, everything is there. I hear that argument from people going, oh, there's no way I would ride with anything like that. I'm sorry, but you're talking out your ass because you've all got your mobile phones in your pockets and believe it or not, they do exactly the same thing. If the old bell wanted, they just seize your phone. They can work out exactly where you are, a good average speed, all of the above, just from your phone. Admittedly, it's a damn sight easier when you've got a dash cam system and it's all there on an SD card, but if they wanted to, they can figure that out. So don't be thinking you're bulletproof. It definitely slows me down, it stops me doing I am not an angel, people, by any shape or form, and I think there are very few people out there who are. But this definitely moderates my riding, definitely. I still enjoy myself, and at the end of the day, all you need to do is switch the system off, just disable it, disconnect the camera, take out, an e take out the SD card. That's all you need to do if you want to go out and not record that ride. But that negative, I suppose, in no way outweighs the positive of knowing that I'm totally covered all the time. And how does it cope in the dark? Well, as you can see here, these are some backcountry roads, no street lights present, main beam, low beam. I did a couple of situations with street lights, no street lights, even some motorway riding, oncoming vehicles, lots of different scenarios at night just to test the performance of the K3. Both cameras suffer from some noise in real low light conditions. Again, as you see here, one of the issues with the fixed camera, as soon as it starts raining or there's any moisture in the air, that gathers on the lens, which does affect your image. So all in, what am I thinking of the Innov K3? Well, it's not a bad system. Just under 300 quid will get you the K3 system. Then obviously you have to add the cost of your SD cards. You can have up to 256 gig, get the best cards you possibly can and make sure they're genuine. There's so many fakes out there. I mentioned right at the start about the GPS overlay. Again, same as the K5, that now works in uh, TS and MP4 formats. You can only view it by viewing the file in the app. Now you can either view that natively off of the camera via the app or you can download it to your phone in the app and view it there and that way it will give you a, a sort of Google map of your location in that file. One thing with the GPS overlay, you can change the icon that represents you. I think default, it comes as a car. So if you just tap it, you can then select whatever you like, anything that's there. One thing I don't like about the K3 is the Wi-Fi is really slow. The K5 comes with five gigahertz Wi-Fi, whereas the K3 is limited to 2.4, I think it is. It's noticeably slower. To download a one minute file, which is about 133 megabytes, that is taking just under two minutes. I think it's about one minute 46 from what I recall, which for me is, is just too long. I wouldn't have waited around for that had I not been doing this review. I will do a comparison vid between the K3 and the K5 if you want to see that, so let me know in the comments down below if that's something you'd like to see. All right then, keep doing your thing, look after yourselves, look after those that you love, but remember, get on out there now that we can and live your life. woo -ha! Jesus, it's actually class one. Blimey people, I'm getting old. What does that say? I think it's class three there. It's the fastest ones you can get anyway. Sandist Extreme Pro I find work beautifully. They're the ones you want to go for. God, I need to go to the opticians. I'm old. Getting old pants. Anyway, let's go.